mother that goes to today into all of the blood. I pray to make it different from the other one. I promise I'll make a better intro later. This is the intro for the dog of blood. Thunderosa eating taco. Alright All right, guys, so this is another episode of Taco Vlog here at Christmas time and I'm here at Teca Molino in San Antonio and I told you this is what's going to be a special Taco Vlog and I have no other than the legend, the one and only yeah, Mick Foley. Oh, Mick, thank you so much for being here. I'm um, welcome to be. I, I heard two things. I heard I got to hang out with you yep. and eat free tacos. Free tacos and tamales. Tamales. They can tamales. Yes. I love tamales, so uh, I'm all in. Yeah, so uh, have you ever had tacos here in San Antonio? It's been many years, many years. How many times have you been here in San Antonio? Uh, San Antonio probably 20, but, but I usually grab the Whataburger. Uh, what? Yeah, yeah, it's a force of habit. <clears throat> I did order some uh, great Mexican uh, from, uh, well, I don't have to give the name of the place. No, you can't. Alamo Cafe. Oh, yeah, 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 it's a pretty good yeah. place, yes. Yeah, so I ordered from there, but uh, uh, I was most excited about being here, not only to try the food, but to hang out with you. Yay. And we have the whole crew, but you guys want to see the crew, you're just going to see him and I eating tacos and talking about tacos, talking about... I have a couple of questions. I usually don't have like really structured questions, but today I have a couple. And I think it goes without saying we look like twins, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> yes, we do. Okay, let's order it because I'm starving. Let's do it. All right, let's go. The manager. Hello. So today we'll be serving our puppy tacos. It's uh, made with our fried masa, uh, mm -hmm. which is our made from corn. We grind our own corn in-house. Yes. Uh, fry the masa and in the fryer it actually puffs up. So we go ahead and fold it in half and stuff it with a bunch of good stuff. Are you ready for that? Have you ever had it before? I don't believe so, but I am ready for a good experience. Yes, right. so he's ready. Okay, let's do this. Great. I'm so hungry. Thank you. So we are here at Teca Molino. They brought this stuff. We had a conversation that you guys couldn't hear us talking because it was very personal. But now they brought all this thing. So we have the puffy taco, oh. which is which is made from like masa. If you guys speak Spanish, masa it's ground 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 corn. This is very, this is very Texan, by the way. This is not what I'm used to. I just went to Monterey last week, so I had like real tacos. So this is very te Texan. Yes, very okay. Texan. But you know, this is like an, you know what an empanada is? I do. Yeah, this, this is like an empanada. Ooh, it's cheese and so I, I jalapeno. I specifically asked for the tamales. No, he did ask for tamales. I got turkey. Uh, I got the other two. I got uh, bean and pork. I fell in love with tamales in McAllen, Texas. Oh, really? I was doing a, so a promotion for one of my events there, yes. and uh, there was like a whole basket. And I just, uh, if you could fall in love with the food, I did that on that <laughs> did day. Did you ever had a tamale in Mexico? No, I've only been, you know, I've only been in Mexico twice. No, no, three times. That's, you know what? That's very interesting because that's one of the questions that I want to start by asking. I have, a, I got, I got several questions for you today. I usually sure. don't do this often, but um, it was one if you've been in Mexico and when and where in Mexico you've been. Yes. Uh, the first time we almost went to Mexico in 1990. Is that before you were famous? I was poquito. Poquito yeah. famous. <laughs> <laughs> it was with The Undertaker before he was The Undertaker mm. and Dutch Mantel, but we didn't have our documentation our passports so um they said ah, i think you'll be okay i remember duck saying i don't want to know what you think and we decided it was not worth the risk so the first time i went i never wrestled in mexico i went to um visit children through child fund international mm. in um uh, michoacan it was uh, a little place called santa fe de la laguna and, Santa Fe de la Laguna. Uh, yeah, you say so. Much cooler than I, did. <laughs> I did pretty good. Just yeah, no, it. it was perfect. And uh, I contributed. Uh, it was quite a bit of money to a um, early childhood education center. So there's a there's a plaque out there where they list their two top donors. They list their five top donors, but uh, <laughs> and so it's um, the Dalai Lama and oh. me. Really? And I was mad because I knew that I'd actually contributed more than <laughs> Dalai Lama. But out of respect, they gave him the uh, the top nod. So, 
you've been doing a lot of volunteer work since like way, yeah, way, well, way before, right? Well, well, this 2022 marks the 30th year that my wife and I have been sponsoring children wow. around the world through Child Fund. But it was only in, I think, 2006 when I went on that trip to Mexico and uh, I decided to sponsor three more children from yes. that area. Um, one of them ended up being a, a really a prolific letter writer. One of them was too young to write letters. Yes. Um, and, re and, and I actually brought her and her family to Mexico City when I went there with WWE. I didn't wrestle, uh, but I did uh, uh, whatever it is you do when you stand around and you're, you know, yeah, you're, yeah. you're, you're, you're the <laughs> former guy. And that was a really nice experience. Awesome. Uh, so I was there to meet the children. Um, I was there for the opening of the... Um, was it, I was it back in Santa Fe. Del, yes. You say it. You say it the cool way. Santa Fe. De la Laguna. De la Laguna. Ah, okay. i not not bad <laughs> though for a rookie. I went there for the opening of the school, and um, and then the, I went to, in two thousand uh, two thousand nine maybe yeah. to be in Mexico City. Mexico City. You, uh, you Me know. Mexico City. There you go. Mexico to be City. part of uh, the WWE event where I got to bring so, the family up there. Since you've been in Mexico City, did you ever, ever like stay? Stay. Hold on. Let me make sure that we are. Yeah. That we you eat tacos over there. Did you had opportunity to eat real tacos? I remember having a lot of. Uh, Let's put the sauce here. These guys. Uh, empanadas. Empanadas. Yeah. I couldn't tell you what I had exactly. <laughs> I will tell you that um, it was good. It's always good. And the food prepared by the uh, family and the children mm -hmm. of the. Um, oh, that's awesome! You the, went to the house then? They didn't go to the house, you know, but they, they brought us to a central, like a central location, mm -hmm. and they were so delicious. I only found out afterwards that they were. Um, uh, it was done with uh, tofu. Oh, hot, hot. <laughs> Even for a veteran, it was hot. No, you know, a lot of salsa. Like, <laughs> I got, like, yeah. I have to try now. I don't know, it's a good spice, but it has a kick. Uh, but here's uh, the thing, um, Thunder. I loved it so much. Yes. Didn't even know it was tofu I was eating as the. But I wonder if I loved it because it was truly delicious, or Probably. if I could taste the love in it. Both. Right? Both. Yeah. Yes. Yes. When it was when it's done well, you will eat anything. All right, I had another question, but before we have a question, let's try our first taco. Right. Okay, so, okay, you want to try the this taco? Sure. So this is this is a very Texan thing. It's it's like it has like gravy. It's the beef taco. Okay. It's on a flour tortilla. Everything here is on flour. It's not on corn. I'm a corn guy. Are you a corn guy? Yeah, I'm a corn guy. Me too. So let's give we're not going to hold it against you though. <laughs> so the tortillas are really good. I don't think it has like chili. It's a very Texas thing. Is that, I mean, they call it Mexican. This, this is Tex Mex. It's straight up Tex Mex. It has a ton of pepper. Very salty. Have you had it you before? You know your stuff. No, I like it a lot though. No, I know my stuff. <laughs> I know oh, my yeah, tacos. <laughs> I do that. Oh, man. Mm. They give us like a plate for a whole family. This thing will be for a whole family in Mexico. Everything gets bigger in Texas, I guess. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> so, I'd say it's delicious, though. I like it. Never had it before, but I do like it. In San Antonio, they're really big on the breakfast tacos and tacos on flour tortilla. Like, that was gonna, I was gonna take Dave LaGreca to his, like, little shack in South San Antonio because it's my favorite breakfast tacos there, and the, the tortillas taste like they're kind of sweet. They're thick. I'm, they're so I'm, good. I'm a breakfast sandwich fanatic. What? Oh yeah. You know the New York, New York with their delis. Mm -hmm. They make these amazing breakfast sandwiches, mm -hmm. and no matter how many times, times you may try to duplicate mm -hmm. the same ingredients, yes. you can't. You can't do it at home. It's like a deli trick or something. And then even a. Even, oh, I mean, I was really down when McDonald's took the all-day breakfast off the menu. Because that was the one way you could go in and get something kind of healthy at 2 a.m. 
And now it's not and now there. Now it's not enough. No, no. And 11 o'clock is done. And I'm not awake during the breakfast hours. So what's your favorite restaurant then? Oh, I love Whataburger. I do love Whataburger. Yeah, I know you might be jaded because you're here in Texas. I do. Every time I eat Whataburger, I get sick. You do? I get diarrhea. <laughs> might be more info than we need, but... Um... I forgot to tell you. I'm always talking about poop. And pee. <laughs> I have another question for you later. It's just funny. Okay. Um, what's your favorite Mexican dish, will you say? I love the great tamale. Tamales. Um, I don't think you can go wrong. I have, I'm have. i one of those guys who has to stare at a menu because mm -hmm. I know everything I get is going to be enjoyable. This is a good This is a good empanada. Is really a, good. This is a cheese empanada with jalapeno in it. I'm just going to get a bite because I'm not too tolerant. You should have said that. This is different. Yeah. This is very different. Tastes like pickles. Pickles, you? Yeah. <laughs> I don't sense the pickles, but you're the expert here. This is a little hardcore for me. I, might, I have a question for you. What do you think about the the hardcore and extreme matches in today's time? In comparison to your, yeah. to your time? I think everything has its time and its place. Yes. Um. So, for example, when you and Britt had that amazing hardcore match, mm -hmm. it um, rightfully blew people away. Part of the reason it blew people away is people hadn't seen something similar to it 10 minutes earlier. And that would be the case <laughs> sometimes in ECW. Yes. You know, where you'd be like, uh, you'd see somebody with some type of uh, yeah, kerosene or something, and be like, oh, oh, it's not... Oh, you're working the leg? Oh, it's like, oh, you're using fire? <laughs> uh, oh, I, I thought I was using that. Oh, yours fire's on a table and mine's on a chair, you know? So it can be really difficult to really make that uh, lasting impression when so many people are doing something similar. So when you and Britt were able to get out there and make that amazing impression on people, it was because it was done at the right place at the right time. Uh, so I know there are tournaments, and I've been in a famous one in Japan where yes. every match is going to be carnage of some kind, and that's the audience for it, and we geared up towards it. Did you always want to do like dead matches and extreme uh, matches? You know what? I, I uh, sometimes say in my shows that I had to accept the process of a you know elimination because I was not a great natural athlete. <laughs> that I was going to have to be a brawling wrestler. Yeah. But I did find out, okay, I can't fly, but I can climb up on things and fall, you know, fall from them, uh, which is like what uh, uh, Woody referred to as falling with style Yes. in uh, Toy Story. So I learned to fall with style, but I did. I always liked the wild stuff. Like, if I was having a good regular match, that was a bonus, yes. but I always liked to I like the creativity yes. that having all those different things afforded me. And I tried to be creative with it. There were times in Japan where, I'm not saying you were fighting for your life, but you were fighting just to get a semi-decent match because you couldn't talk before, language barrier was there. I've been there. And you're just trying to do the best you can with a very limited hand. <laughs> yes. And so what, what unveils is not a work of art by any means. It's just like uh, practice and survival, you know, getting through the match. Yes. Um, but there are times, I think, when it's done right, where it can be really, yeah, yeah, really beautiful in a surreal art or uh, artistic type of way. Yeah, it, it was, like, definitely, I can tell you when I was there, I was like, this is for the, for the, for the art of wrestling. Uh, like I told you, I wasn't, I'm not a dead court, dead match or a street fighter at all. I mean, my only time that I, like, faced real death at, at that point was, like, when I step in the cage. And you're like trying to survive. Like, yeah, yeah. And I remember, <clears throat> I mean, I still have this like scar right here because I got cut with an elbow as the girl was like mounting me. And she and I'm like trying to protect myself, trying to get out. And she just went in. Whack. Yeah. I yeah. remember getting up and it was just like blood all over. And I'm like, I had one more round. How did you feel about the blood? It was warm. <laughs> right? It was warm. That's the first thing. I opened my eyes and I feel this warmth coming in. And then I heard. <gasps> Because all my wrestling fans were there and my son was on the second row. 
and I just can hear him, no, don't give up, don't give up, you know, it was, it was so intense. Yeah. And, um, so coming into the, into the match with Britt Baker, like that's one of the things that I was terrified. It was because I knew I couldn't kill her. Even if I wanted to, I couldn't kill her. <laughs> but it was like how I was going to make sure that she was safe and I was going to be safe, right? Yeah. Which was the most important thing. And talking about being safe, and my husband introduced me to wrestling because I, I didn't know who people are because I never watch wrestling. I right. come from another world. And I remember he made me watch you and Undertaker when you flew like and just fell. Yeah. And, and he told me about your teeth, and I was like, I what are you thinking? I, I still have to take them out to eat. <laughs> and it's tough. It's a funny thing. Red is supposed to fix the teeth. Because, really? Yeah. Because it's um, not just the two are out. It's the two, one on each side. So it's actually four teeth. Do they went through your, through your mouth? Or uh, what happened? The uh, chair that was up on top of the cell, I had the wisdom to bring that up. When uh, it came, followed me down when the Undertaker chokes on me. So I hit, and then the thing hits me in the face. Oh. So they just blunt force trauma. To this day, I have no idea how the one tooth ended up in my nose. Um, but it made for a visual. As long as you're going to have a terrible oh accident. Oh, my God. <laughs> might as well get it on camera, right? Well, yeah, and then now you, you, that is, like, one of the most, I guess, historical crazy yeah, matches yeah. that if you want to do some crazy shit, you're like, you got to watch that shit because... I mean, I've seen some, I've seen some bloody, crazy, shit, but that so far, I don't even know how you're like standing. It's so different, yeah, so different. I don't know. Could have turned out a lot worse. Can I break a story here about something that could have turned Absolutely. out a lot worse? Absolutely, yes. I'm in um, Irving, Texas, two days ago, mm -hmm. and this guy comes up to me. Um, I didn't even know I was allowed to sell gimmicks. You know, I was doing this uh, yes. a free show for a booker who'd been really good to me, and he was like, "Hey, you got your photos?" Like. Luckily, I had some photos, so I was able to do a meet and greet. Yes. So I wasn't getting paid for the event itself. I'm standing there. Guy comes up. He goes, I wouldn't be here if not for you. And I said, really? And he goes, yeah. He said, uh, my parents stopped off to help some guy on the side of the road who had broken down. And I immediately remember this. I remember exactly what happened, although a little bit of it is a blur. Mm -hmm. I was in, I was just part of world class championship wrestling, so I was known in the area. And yes. If you were a big wrestling fan and watched that, I was a big deal. I wouldn't say I was. Uh, my my paycheck would indicate I was not a big star. <laughs> I was not really yeah. Paid much. But here comes this nice family to help me out. I cur I frequently broke down. I had a four hundred dollar Plymouth Arrow. Then it happens when, a lot, guys. Yeah, yeah, when, I, <laughs> when I eventually got rid of it. I just did the old wrestler thing. It broke down. I was on the way to a show on the East Coast. I took the license plates off, put my thumb out, and just left it on the side of the road. Uh, but in this case, this family comes over, husband and wife, and now the wife sees me. Remember, I'm on the side of the road. Yes. Wife sees me, and she is a fan, and she does a double take. And in doing the <laughs> double take, she takes two step, steps backwards into the path of a tractor trailer. <gasps> and this is where the mother and father claim swear that I pulled her to safety. I can't, I'd like to take that credit. I can't remember because it was just like a, it was just such a blur. But I do remember sitting in my car. I can't remember if they helped me because I know it was all blur of that. I remember sitting in my car shaking thinking to myself that if that truck had been if one foot's difference would have been the difference between her living and not only her meeting an awful death but me maybe never ever forgetting that image in my mind and feeling like i caused it so they give me credit for saving her life but i'm the guy that caused her to take two steps backwards <laughs> into the truck's path but i remember that being one of the scariest things and he said, you remember? I said, oh, I remember all of it, except for that one yes. little blur. And he said, all this time, I thought they were making it up. They said, you wouldn't be here if we're not for Mick Foley. Isn't that a cool story? It's incredible, actually. Like, that's a Taco Blog exclusive, too. That's a Taco Blog exclusive, guys. And I've got to bite into this. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah he's getting soggy. Do you so. throw anything on it? Um, I put guacamole in it, and then... I would have liked to have some like sour cream, honestly, but I don't know. They're can like we, spicy. Can we give a shout out for sour cream? 
You want some? Hey, if you're telling me that's going to make the difference. Sour cream makes a difference on everything. But... Excuse me. Can I get sour cream? Hold on. Enjoy this, right? All right, yeah. Now, all right. So we're going to put sour cream on this. On the recommendation of Thunder Rosa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I, I recommend all this stuff. All right, so put it on, put it in there. And then he's gonna put sour cream on the tamale. On one tamale, at least a little bit. On and one then, tamale. On one tamale. And they got me bean tamale too. I don't eat bean tamales. I haven't had a bean tamale. I got a bean and a pork. Right, I think so they give me the same. Which one do you wanna eat first? The tamale yeah, or you wanna eat the... I'll try the tamale. Like you like it? So another another fun fact about these tamales. These are so small. And you guys know if you're Mexican, you, you, our tamales are not that small. They're actually big. So this is very Texan, again. This is very, very Texan. -ish. So I'm gonna put the sour cream on the tamale and then the green sauce. You do unwrap the corn, right? Yeah, you don't need the, you okay. don't you don't need that. I mean, some people might argue that they wanna eat it. I don't. All right, I have, mm. oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, this tastes good. I mean, okay, I have one question. I got like five or more questions for you. All right. Okay, so Cactus Jack is from New Mexico, right? Allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly. Were you trying to be like a cowboy character or like a, more like a Mexican luchador because we have the mask on? Yeah. Well, here's the truth is I had created this character in my mind, Dude Love. Mm -hmm. And not just in my mind, we've done these couple of real, uh, real amateur backyard videos that involve front yard wrestling, but only as a way to, you know, propel the storyline. Yes. So the, the wrestling is seen in the montage form. And so, Dude Love was the character that I aspired to be mm. when I had my first match in Clarksburg, West Virginia in 1986. I was asked what my name was. I knew I wasn't good enough to be Dude Love yet. I wanted to pay tribute to my dad yeah. um, because there was some kind of board game you could order out of the back of PWI magazine. Back in the day. Back, back in the day. Back back in the the day. day. You would order it, it would come to you a few months later and uh, you could create your own characters. Mm -hmm. There'd be other characters that were clearly meant to be better known characters, yes. but the trademark or whatever, they couldn't use their exact name. Uh, and then there was a handful, you could make up your own name. So I was the Bloomington buzzsaw coming from Bloomington, Indiana. And I just assigned my dad, Jack Foley, the name Cactus Jack. Cactus Jack. And so I thought, all right, first match, you know, and then and every match until I become good enough to be Dude Love. When I put the Dude Love name on it, it's going to mean something. Yes. But in the meantime, Cactus Jack's a generic name. I uh, The ring announcer, Hank Hudson, asks me where I hail from. I say Bloomington, Indiana. He, he like says, there's no cactuses in Bloomington. He said, uh, how about Tucson, Arizona? I said, okay. He goes, wait, hold on. He's a man, he works in a uh, post office. He goes, yes. hold on. I think there's a truth to consequences in Arizona. And then he goes, oh, no, no, that's New Mexico. And I said, that sounds like a good hometown to me. Truth to consequences, New Mexico, it was. And the rest is history. And the, But the truth is, as I evolved with this cactus yes. character, it became very clear to me that I was not meant to be like the ladies man like <laughs> mother nature was not meeting me halfway on that so that when mr mcmahon allowed me to be to be dude love it was like with a wink and a nod especially because i was coming off uh over a year about 15 months as this very dark mankind character yes yes i went on an interview with jim ross and talked about these um dreams i had and it really connected with the fans to the point where it was right here, right here in San Antonio. That's so interesting. Where I uh, became Dude Love for the first time and captured the tag team title with Steve Austin. So, uh, holds some great memories for me. So, just like you said, you put it, you put it in, in 
in perspective and you said it's gonna mean something when you become do love and then right. you became a champion and yes, it was, it was like an evolution yeah. right it was like a dream come true it really was that's awesome yeah and vince was really happy that i got to live out that dream so, and then you know the there's a legendary night where i wrestled with all three characters in the rumble <laughs> and the only thing my youngest son could say was you, you still couldn't win <laughs> so he was a little tough on me yeah usually our kids are pretty tough like they my pretty... my son is he's a jerk sometimes anakin oh. he'd be like your matches are boring can you do something new You're kidding me <laughs> yes he does that's the same way when i would ask really? my son i'd say yeah like what do you like to see and he goes I like to see a fast moving match with all kinds of great moves and very close false finishes. I was like, so what you're saying is <laughs> you don't like to watch my matches, which did not move fast, did not have all kinds of cool moves in them. I was just creative about moves. to say that. Yeah, sometimes it can be a little jerks. Shout out yeah. to our kids. Um, all right, I um, have. If you had the opportunity to be a luchador, what would your name would it be? What would my name have been? Yes. Well, can we um, give a lucha stamp to Cactus Jack? Oh, yeah. You want to know what it is? Yeah, I do. Juan Nopales. That's, then that's who <laughs> I'd be. Is that the translation? <laughs> yes. So there you go. He, he His debut probably in the next three years. Juan Nopales will be in your next uh, in Lucha Libre in Mexico. Ya saben. We should make a shirt that says Juan Nopales for you. I'll do it. If you ever bring me down to Mission... Well, you know, as a matter of fact, Editor, you got to make this shirt for him and we're going to send it to his house for Christmas because he be loves nice. Christmas. I do love Christmas. Yes. Juan Nopales will be... Tonight, actually, we're, we're in San Antonio. He's going to be doing stand-up comedy. So we are super excited. Um, if Mick Foley was to get into wrestling right now, if you were like 26 years old, who would you like to wrestle right now? I don't know if I would get into wrestling. <laughs> I, I'm going to like, tell you why. That?